I've been thinking a lot about podcasts lately. During this whole lockdown situation, one of my favorite pastimes has been going for a long walk while listening to podcasts. And there is a lot happening in the podcast industry these days. Some of the world's biggest companies are investing a lot of money in audio entertainment. Spotify has been beefing up over the last couple of years and Amazon recently started throwing a shit ton of money at podcasts. But the latest story that really got me thinking was a report that Apple is apparently looking to start a premium podcast service, a sort of Apple Podcasts Plus probably. So that's what I really want to talk about today. Can Apple beat Spotify and Amazon in the podcasts game? But let's start at the beginning. Because when you're talking about the history of podcasting, you really have to mention Apple. While the format of an episodic audio program existed before the iPod, and podcasting as a whole is in many ways just the natural evolution of radio, you really cannot ignore Apple's part in the story. The development and the adoption of the format was definitely helped and accelerated by the iPod. And I mean, the term podcasting is literally a portmanteau of iPod and broadcasting. Now, there was a time when everyone had an MP3 player and the iPod was basically just another MP3 player. You didn't need an iPod to listen to a podcast. You could listen on any MP3 player or a computer for that matter. But the iPod became the king of MP3 players and there was a time when Apple with the iPod actually had a more than 70% market share of all portable music players in the US. So for many people, iPod basically became synonymous with MP3 players. And since everyone had an iPod and that's what they'd used to listen to this new audio show format, it made sense to name the format after the iPod. Apple's huge, almost monopoly-like share of the MP3 player market was probably in large part thanks to iTunes. iTunes made it easy to buy and transfer music to your iPod. You just had to connect the iPod to your computer with a cable and it would automatically transfer your music. This was like magic back in the day. So when Apple in 2005 added formal support for podcasts in iTunes, it made it really freaking easy to start listening to podcasts. And I think that really paved the way for that exponential growth we've seen in the podcast industry these past years. All of this is basically just to explain that Apple and podcasts have been very tightly connected for a long time. And the reason podcasts are this big of an industry today is in no small part thanks to Apple. But I think Apple may have rested on its laurels for a bit too long. Apple were the provider of podcasts. iTunes was the place you wanted your podcast to be. But as podcasting has become a bigger and bigger industry, more and more money has started to be thrown at it. And like I said, there are some big companies that have realized that podcasts and audio entertainment has massive potential. So that's where we are today. Apple has had one of the biggest platforms for podcasts originally because of the iPod and iTunes. But today I'm willing to guess that most of the people that use Apple's podcasts app are probably using it because it was on their phone when they bought it. There's not really any reason to be using Apple podcasts over something like, say, Spotify. So when Spotify starts buying up big podcasting networks like Gimlet Media and not to mention their exclusive deal with Joe Rogan, why wouldn't you want to listen to your podcasts on Spotify? And as I said, lately Amazon has apparently set their eyes on the millions of podcast listeners all over the world as well. With an Audible subscription, you get access to their exclusive Audible original podcasts. And they've now, like Spotify, built podcasts into Amazon Music too. So if Apple doesn't do something soon, I'm afraid they're gonna repeat the same mistake they made with streaming music. This was another service where Apple was very late to the game. Back in the day, Apple revolutionized the music industry with iTunes. iTunes was kind of the first way that you could legally buy and download digital music. But a decade later, the landscape had changed again. People's internet connections had gotten better and we could now stream high quality video and audio straight to our phones. And that's when Spotify came in and basically swooped up the market right under Apple's nose. It took Apple a long time before they eventually launched a competitor in Apple Music. And by then, many people had already started using Spotify and gotten used to the platform. When you've already created playlists with all your favorite songs on one platform, you don't really want to switch platforms. So if Apple are not careful and do something ASAP, 
they might end up losing most of their podcast listeners as well. But of course, it's not like Apple are really actually gaining anything from having people listening to podcasts on their podcast app. All of the podcasts on there are free, so it's not like they're getting any money from it. But if Apple did want to make money off of their podcast platform, which they most definitely do want to, it's gonna be a hell of a lot easier to convince people to stay on the platform rather than trying to persuade them to come back once they've already left. But how could Apple make money off of podcasts? Well, they might want to launch a service with premium Apple original shows like they did with Apple TV+. Plus. But I'm not sure that will work with an Apple Podcasts Plus service if the business model is going to be the same as with TV+. Plus. Now, there does exist podcast platforms such as Luminary that claim that they want to be the Netflix of podcasts. The idea is that they're going to provide a library of exclusive quality podcasts that you can access ad-free if you pay a small monthly fee. But the thing is, I have no confidence in that business model when it comes to podcasts. There are so many really excellent podcasts out there that you can listen to for free. Why would you want to spend money on some podcasts that gives you the promise that they're gonna be good when there's already so many good free ones that you could listen to instead? I get that this is a way to try to get the people who make the podcast some decent compensation for their work. But from the very beginning, podcasts have been completely democratized and free to listen to. And yes, it might be a better experience to listen to these podcasts without ads, but I don't really think people mind the ads. And if you really don't want to listen to the ads, it's fairly easy to just skip them. Apple does have a lot of money though, so they would probably be able to get some pretty big stars to host their podcasts. I wouldn't be surprised if Apple announced a podcast with Oprah, for instance. But I still don't think people are gonna be interested enough to pay $4.99 every month for Apple's podcasts. So what then? Well, let's take a look at the competitors. If we take a look at Spotify, what are they doing with their podcasts? For the most part, Spotify just works like any other podcast app or podcatcher as they're called. You can listen to all your favorite podcasts right in the app and you don't even have to pay. You don't have to have a Spotify premium account. I'm willing to guess that Spotify's bet here is probably that if they can lure you over to their platform with an exclusive podcast like the Joe Rogan Experience, which they're giving away for free, then you might as well stay on the platform for your music listening needs as well. And then it's just a small step before they eventually turn you in to a paying Spotify premium customer. So you see, Spotify aren't really trying to make money off of you listening to podcasts on their platform. Their end goal is to try to get you to buy Spotify premium and podcasts are just part of the bait. And this then leads us back to Apple because I think Apple's strategy should probably be something similar. I don't think a standalone Apple Podcasts Plus service will have enough pull to get people to pay for that service on its own, no matter how much star power is behind it. But if they bundle their Apple original podcasts with Apple Music, and they really put some effort into making some great and exciting shows, then I think that might be able to convince people to subscribe to Apple Music. So that's what I think Apple are gonna do in the podcast space. They're gonna use podcasts to try to get you to buy Apple Music. Eventually, if they build enough of a library of good shows, then they might be able to spin it off into its own standalone service. But I don't think that's gonna be their first move. They need to get people hooked on their podcasts first. But with that said, I really do think that this idea of exclusive podcasts and putting podcasts behind a paywall is a really unfortunate trend. One of the most exciting things about podcasts is the democratized nature of it. The fact that anyone can make their own show and it can be there on the same digital shelf as big name Hollywood productions, that's just so cool. So I really do hate to see this trend. But yeah, that's just my thoughts. I don't think there can be much doubt that Apple are gonna launch a podcast service in the near future. But whether it's gonna be a standalone service called Apple Podcasts Plus, or it's gonna be an extension of Apple Music, well, we'll just have to wait and see.
Until then, we can't do much other than discuss. So please tell me in the comments down below what you think they're gonna do. I'd love to know. But that's pretty much all I had for you today. Thank you so much for watching and remember that if you want to see more videos from me, then tap that subscribe button. But until next time, take care and so long. Thank <laughs> you.